What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Founder Hour podcast. This is your co-host, Posh. I'm Pat. And we are here today with Armand Oganesian, who is one of the founders of Dave's Hot Chicken. What's going on? What's up, man? What's up, Armand? How are you guys? Yeah. Doing great. Thanks for having us here. Of course, man. We are at the Dave's Hot Chicken headquarters in Hollywood, California. Yeah. Secret headquarters of Dave's Hot Chicken. Oh, yeah. Okay. Drop, drop the address of the secret location. I'm just yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Armand, the way we like to start things off is before we talk about, you know, what you're doing now, we like to start from the very beginning, you know, where you grew up and your upbringing. So, tell us a little bit. I mean, did you grow up in L.A.? Uh, I did. So, I was uh, born in Armenia and uh, I moved out here with my family when I was like two years old or about two and a half years old. Uh, moved to Hollywood, pretty much grew up in Hollywood the whole time. Um, honestly, my whole life I was really interested in acting. Like that was my real passion. Like acting and comedy is what I did for a long time up until I was like 25, 26, right, from, right, right before Dave's. Why is that? What, what got you into acting? Uh, dude, I don't know, man. I, I remember when I came to America, one of the first things I did was watch the movie Dumb and Dumber. And I was like, wow, man, like, this is such a, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And just, uh. I don't know, just ever since I would just go to school and try to like impersonate Jim Carrey or like impersonate things I see on TV and it just became kind of like something I would love, something I was good at, something I would do. So I did that for a while and I realized I also, you know, I kind of had a way with making people laugh, you know. So I realized, you know, I slowly started transitioning into comedy and I slowly started transitioning to, transitioning to stand-up comedy. And I actually think I did my first stand-up song when I was like 24, I want to say. So okay. it took me an actual long time to even like Get must up muster up the courage to get up there. Yeah, dude, because I was a perfectionist, and I was like, I don't want to do it unless I feel like I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give like 110 percent, do an amazing job, and be proud of the work that I do. So I, I felt like that's when I was ready to do it, and that's when I that's when I did it. Did you, did, while you were growing up, what was your school life school life like? I mean, did you end up going to school beyond you know college, high school? I mean, what was what was uh, that like? So I was ever too big of a fan of school um again just early on i knew that i wanted to be more in like arts yeah like arts and like just creativity was my, right. was my thing you know there was not much in school i was interested in so i, I just kind of you know um got by it's funny actually i met uh one of the co-owners of dave's tommy in kindergarten on our first oh, day wow. so we've been friends since wow. kindergarten yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah. wild so i mean school was fun though but i mean it, it was a great experience i i, I took it as like a learning experience i learned what i could and i and i took what i could from it you know, whatever would help me in my day to day life. But I did up to high school. And after high school, I went to some acting classes for a little while. And then after that, I got myself an agent and just started doing small auditions here and there. And, you know, kind of doing the actor life for a while. There was no pressure from your Armenian parents to, you know, be uh, uh, a more professional, you know, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Dude, you know, I, there wasn't like pressure. My dad would, uh, he would always say, you know, you guys can just be whatever you want. Just be good people, you know, and, and treat people with respect. So that's kind of, that was his thing. Um, they never pressured. I mean, they would suggest, they would be like, oh, you know, is, is this really a steady career? Is there nothing else you want to try? And, you know, they would suggest things. But uh, they also know the type of person I am. And I, I, I know what I want to do and I do it. And I don't really let people steer my decisions. So, and I was like that from a very young age. So they knew that. So they would just kind of let me do my own thing. And. And uh, I kind of always knew that. I knew whether or not I went to school or got like a guaranteed job or not. I knew I could find my way and I could do certain things like push myself forward. So and I think they knew that too. So there wasn't a lot of pressure from them at all. Yeah. Um, but but so like throughout high school, like besides kind of the, I know the acting thing, it sounded like you, you were kind of interested in it, but you weren't as serious about it until yeah. afterwards. Was it always the plan or was it kind of just like if I don't figure out another path mm -hmm. while I'm in school then then this is what I'm doing Dude, it was always the plan but at the same time I also had a passion for like um creating like concepts you know like thinking of inventions or like games or like card games or you know rush or whatever it was, it was always something I was like constantly trying to come up with something you know yeah. and, I, and you know from a young age I think I realized like that's what I really want to do. Like, I didn't want to work for somebody. I didn't want to go to school for like five, ten years and just do something that I wasn't happy doing just because it was a guaranteed paycheck. You know, yeah. to me, I felt like kind of taking the riskier path and doing what I love and learning and experiencing life was cool enough for me. You know, like yeah. it, it has its own benefits in my in my opinion. Then right. Sticking to the oh, let's go to school for this many years and, and still have a guarantee. Yeah, and I think that that takes a lot of courage in a way too because it's like, you know. Um, 
a lot of people feel that way too growing up and then they, they still end up going to college whether it's yeah. pressure from parents whether it's pressure from society yeah. because it's like well you know maybe i should do this but then you start yeah. you go and you start racking up all these loans and you have no. to like, pay all, and it makes it harder yeah. to end up doing your own yeah. thing and if there's nothing you're passionate about like what's the point you know you, at some point you have to let you know you can't let the pressure of what people say get to you. You know, you have to realize, is this something I want to do? Do I want to go to school? Is this something I'm going to do? And if not, like, you know, you shouldn't feel pressured not to go. There's a lot of people that didn't go to, you know, the best colleges or the best schools, and they're still successful people in right. life. They do what they want. They take other, you know, avenues of succeeding. Yes. So, so Armand, you decided early on that, you know, arts, entertainment, you know, comedy is something you want to pursue. How did you even get into it? I mean, a lot of people want to be in entertainment. Yeah. You know, everybody in LA wants to be an actor or actress. So, what did you do to stand out? I mean, you know, what, what were the steps that you took to actually be successful? You know, the the, the funniest thing is, I, I didn't really take that many like as many steps as I probably should have or could have at the time, because I was always at the mindset that oh, I'm I have a talent for this and it's kind of like always there and I could just. It's like my backup whenever I need it. So mm -hmm. I didn't feel as much like, oh, I, I, I got to do this or I don't. So I was like, ah, it'll happen whenever it happens because I have the talent and it's not going to go away anytime soon. So I didn't do as much. I mean, I tried, I did like, you know, like Instagram videos and like YouTube videos because I like to create my own stuff and, you know, occasional like acting classes here and there. I was with a commercial like agency called Daniel Hoff. So I was going to like commercial auditions and then like small movie auditions and different things like that. So that's where the money is, right? Commercials. Did it, dude, that's, that is where the, honestly, man. They, it's those, insane how, how much they pay for like 15 just, seconds of like Dude, it's ridiculous. Like, I just don't have the commercial. I mean, going to all those commercial auditions, I realized like the commercial actor look is completely different than like an actor look. Right. Like, they just want like the, the most, like almost like the most relatable looking people. Right. You know what I mean? It's I mean, you're so selling a product or something yeah. at that point. So it's really, and that is where the, dude, if you book something like a Verizon or like the guy, like, can you hear me now? Yeah. Set, dude. Oh, did, like, wasn't, I think like the flow girl, the yeah, yeah, progressive yeah. chick, progressive, yeah. she was like a background actor, like an yeah. extra. Right. And then she, they, she just became like the biggest thing. Do no background acting. Anymore. Or like these this hand models, right? Like these people that have like great hands yeah. and they just use them like as hand models, like the Apple commercials. I, and stuff. I used to be a, I used to be a hand model. You're a hand model? Let me see your hands. I'm not. Let me see hands. What's the special? <laughs> no one's gonna mind. Get those hands out of here, bro! Not taking pictures of those. Not wasting the film. <laughs> That's so crazy, how long man. were? I mean, I, I know you were doing the comedy thing. You were on Vine and you know yeah. YouTube. So we were Instagram. on Vine and YouTube, and then in between, it's funny. So uh, in between, where, where were you getting this content from, by the way? Like, where were you coming up with the um, the actual just, comedy? I just like day to day things that would happen that would like you know get inspiration from, or you know, just there was times where we'd actually like go and sit down and try to like come up with different material. Um, but at the same time we were doing that. So all throughout, so right after high school and after the couple of years of acting from my twenties till 26, uh, I went back and forth between acting comedy and trying to come up with like some sort of concept, like, you know, something, you know, and, uh, it's funny cause it's, it was still me and Dave, my, Dave, who I started Dave's hot chicken with. And, uh, we had so many like different, we tried to bunch of different things together you know like, he was in the same kind of scenario as you like kind of just no nah, he's uh he was actually funny enough he's been in culinary since he was like a little kid and he's loved food his whole life and he's been to like cooking schools and mm -hmm. he's worked at like every restaurant in la you could think of so that was always his passion i remember i remember when i met dave i met him on his like i think 15th or like 16th birthday or something like that and uh we became friends instantly and we started hanging out the next day dude this guy would walk around with like Book. It was like a movie. We were all going like books of like cooking books of like different. It was like ridiculous, and he was like reading all of them, and he was just so into it. Like you could, that's like that was his main passion. And uh, he would also drum too. He would love drumming, but food was like his passion for life. Yeah. So, so I'm curious how. So you said you met Dave, you know, when he was 15, 16. You met Tommy when he was kindergarten, kindergarten with you. Yeah. I mean, t talk to me about your friendship with these two folks. Uh, so Tom's of course always like. He was like one of my best friends, of course, because you, you know you meet you've known him longer than like what twenty years, nineteen years. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about it. Um, and but Dave, I met later on, but me and Dave had like a really cool relationship right off the bat. You know, we we became friends very fast. And I I don't I don't normally become friends with people t t like if, if at all. Like I mean, I'm I'm cool with everybody, but I don't really like to hang out with people like on the, especially people I just meet. You know, but I met him and the next day. I was like, yeah, let's hang out. Like, let's go. Let's go. Like chill. Let's go do something. You're a cool guy. So we developed a friendship right away and it was like we'd known each other for years and it just kind of continued like that. And funny enough, I would actually see Dave a lot more than I would see Tommy because Tommy, you know, working is doing his own thing and then me and Dave kind of live close. So, And what was, was Tommy doing? 
So Tommy has, uh, his family has a flower shop called Mary's Flowers. So he would help with that. And uh, he was going to a pharmacy school, I believe. And he worked as a pharmacist uh, slightly. Uh, I know he didn't like it, though. Um, but he was just kind of trying to, again, find his own thing that he's trying to do, you know. And did you guys ever all th – did the three of you hang out before things yeah. happened? Yeah. Funny enough, we did but not as much as – because, we, uh, you know, we, have, right. we were a large group of friends. Right, right, right. And we'd obviously, like, hang out in different groups. And uh, me, Dave, and Tom, we, it wasn't, like, a regular thing for us to hang out at all, like, if ever, like, you know. or But we would, like, obviously we all – It was, like, moved. different circles in a way, right? It was kind of like different yeah. circles. Yeah, like, well, you know, uh, obviously they, they knew each other, but we weren't all, like, the best of friends in, like, groups of three, you know. like yeah. But – it was, and it was funny how it worked out that the three of us ended up starting Dave's. So that's always a funny coincidence. But after that, obviously, like, we see each other, like, every day now. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, now we're just, like, we can't even imagine what it was like before when we yeah. didn't see each other every day. And, and so going back to, like, um, your kind of acting stuff, like, how did that turn out? Like, did, I mean, what, were you, did, did you see, like, a promise in that? Like, were you getting, like, big gigs or anything that, like, was, like, maybe I should do this for the rest of my life? I was getting promised that I was, I was getting promised in the sense that I, I realized that I did understand what I was doing and I did have a talent for it and it was only a matter of time before I did book something. But at the same time, I did realize that you don't know when that's going to be. It could be a month, it could be a year, it could be two years, it could yeah. be five years before you book something that's your big break. So I, I knew that it wasn't a guarantee. So I knew it was something that I could do. Uh, and I was going to great auditions that I was getting very close to booking. So I knew it was something that I I, I was going to do. But I also realized that it, it's not – if it's going to be something that I'm depending on to pay my bills, yeah. it's not going to happen like right. at the moment or right now or any time in the foreseeable future. Or yeah. it might, but you don't know and you can't bet on when it's going to be. Right. And it's so, kind of the s same no matter how what stage you're in in, the, in, in that industry. Exactly. Like, even the big actors, obviously, they're getting paid exactly, a lot of money. Man. So they get to save more for the rest of the year. Dude, like, but, it never changes. Like I, I read a story the other day about when uh, – Toby uh, Toby Maguire was uh, playing uh, Spider Man. Spider Man, yeah. And then the uh, the second season, he didn't want to play anymore because he got injured and he's like he wanted more money. And they're like, oh, we'll just recast you with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And he took he's like, oh no, I'm I'm good. And like so even at that level, you still have people that are like, oh well, that's my competition. And like I can't I can't lose a role to that guy, you know. And right. you still have your bills. Like just because you're you know you, you you make a lot of money acting doesn't mean that you don't have a lot of bills to pay. You you need those. Roles. If anything, you have more bills to pay than someone yeah. who's like and still if, trying to make it. And if anything, you have more competition because you're now listed as an A list or whatever list actor, and now you're in competition with the people in that same class as you. Right. Are. You know, it's, it's a lot harder to book stuff when everybody's so famous and there's such limited roles to go around sometimes. Armand, mm -hmm. did you think that you would be in the entertainment space for the rest of your life or you knew that it was something that was going to be short-lived and that there had to be something else? I, it's funny, man, but I knew that I was going to be in the entertainment field, acting, comedy, and I was going to get back into it. But I also realized that there might be a point where I stepped away and did something else that was more financially beneficial mm -hmm. and take whatever financial comfort I get from that and then go back into acting and comedy with, you know, less pressure on like making a paycheck, you know, yeah. like, it's a lot easier to, you know, go into an audition and be yourself when you're not depending on the check to pay your bills. Yeah. You know, you're now you're just going in there and having fun versus the, you know, nervousness of like, I, I need this and you're depending on it. Every audition is like, you're depending on it, mm -hmm. you know? So it kind of changes the game when you're like, you're not so dependent on it. You're just going in there like, Hey, yeah. this is what I got. If you like it, you like right. it. If you don't, you don't. And in that type of space, cause I know there's a lot of folks who like make funny videos on Instagram these days. Like Vine, unfortunately is, is no longer a thing. Yeah, well, I know yeah. they have Vine yeah. too, but I don't know how that's going. Ah, that's um, right. that's <laughs> right. um, but like, like at what point do these people actually start making money? Like, is it when they're cast for a role in like a movie or show or something Dude, like that? I wouldn't be able to tell you because I never got to that level <laughs> yeah. of making a good amount of money in acting. So I don't know when that level is. I can imagine it's when you start getting a good amount of followers. On YouTube and, or something? Yeah. Or Instagram? Can, yeah, like, or whatever. And you yeah. can kind of start using that as a platform. It's like, hey, um, I have XX amount of followers. I get XX amount of views. If you would like me to plug your product, I need X amount of dollars. And right. you book a certain amount of sponsors mm -hmm. per show or per episode and that'll start to be your income and the bigger you grow the more you can charge and the more spots you can have and the more avenues you can have of entertainment where you can plug people and yeah. there's a real way you make money is you you know you, you plug you companies will come to you and be like hey i'm 7-eleven you're famous the traditional like influencer model yeah i mean yeah. it's 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 the way it goes i mean i feel like uh, otherwise you know you can create a product and you know Again, sell to your followers. But I think the main thing is you need a, a good amount of followers. Yeah. The more people you have that are actually paying attention to you is is the more people That's that actually... That's pretty much all it is. Real yeah. followers, not fake followers. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's more people <laughs> are going to want to pay attention to you. So if you're yeah. getting like 100,000 views a, a, a YouTube 
episode, people are like, dude, this guy's on let's let's, mm-hmm, let's, mm-hmm. let's try to work with him because he's getting a, that's a lot of views. That's a hundred thousand people per episode that are that see what you have to say, and you can go out there and say anything because it's your platform. Right, right. So people start to be like, oh well, you know, yeah. Like that, I, I saw, like I, I forgot how much it was, but I saw like a number like estimated how much David Dobrik makes like per month. Oh, I'm sure nuts. he's one of our customers. He's a good friend yeah. of ours. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I'm he, sure, be, dude. but he's like killing. It. He's like the biggest person probably on. And I would imagine yeah. so because when you look at his Instagram, dude, the guy can't post anything without everybody blowing up on it. Yeah. Which is, I mean, he's a great guy, dude. Like I met him a few times, and you know, he's been nothing. Right. Really I think I saw um, Austin McBroom here too one time. Yeah, and Nick is you know, on Nick Jonah. Yeah. The big guy from David, yeah, dude. Yeah. Me and him were friends before we uh, started. Dave's we were in there. We did videos together. And we did comedy together oh, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, and he was a producer, and we like we did a bunch of stuff together. And then when we did Dave's, that's when he went and met Dave and stuff, and that's when he kind of did his thing. So the whole it was thing kind happened. Of like a small world, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So speaking of Dave's, before we jump into the whole start of Dave's and how it started and where it started, mm-hmm. talk to me about why it started or how that process even was where mm. you and Dave and Tommy got together. Like why, why Dave's hot chicken? I mean, you, mm. you know, you were, you know, one person was doing pharmacy, you're doing the videos, mm. Dave's Cooking. carrying around cookbooks. Yeah. Like, so wh- what was that moment that you guys came together or was it several different moments? I mean, give so us I the whole story. It, it was a, it was a combination of several different moments combined with us realizing that we, you know, the pressure was starting to get us. We need to do something, you know? Like, yeah. Dave realized, like, I can't just keep, like, working for other people. I'm a talented chef. I can't just keep working for other people. He was working as a chef? He was working as, like, a uh, lion Sous cook chef. Stuff. Yeah, he's, I mean, dude, he worked at, like, Chateau Marmont, like, yeah. La like, some of the dopest La places. Yeah, yeah, like, a lot of them. Like, dude, yeah. this guy would, like, switch restaurants every, like, seven months just to get, like, experience. It was ridiculous. Right. Like, every time I was like, oh, he's like, oh, no, I don't work anymore. I work here somewhere else now. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. And he was always bringing stuff. So, um, it's like, so, bro, I'm trying to bring a date one time when you're there. That's like, what I'm oh, saying, I can, I can't dude. Keep I'm like, up dude, I need some free food, man. Yeah. What's going on, Dave? <laughs> but, uh, so. you know, and we knew we needed to do something. And we had a couple ideas right before that I had, like, just barely failed. And uh, so we, and here's the thing. So I've had like a love of fried chicken my whole life. It's always been like my favorite food since I was a kid. That's just, that was my thing. I love fried chicken. Uh, and then Dave obviously is into culinary and stuff. And we always used to eat in and out So we'd eat lots of in and out and lots of fried chicken. This is what we would do. It was our thing everywhere. And then I remember one time uh, my friend took me to Howland Ray's. And he's like, you got to try this fried chicken. You love fried chicken. You got to try this fried chicken. So I was like, okay. Dude, it was like, I remember when I had it, it was like the most mind-blowing sandwich I've ever had. I was like, dude, this is amazing. I'm like, this, like these spices with the fried chicken is just perfect. Like, it's it's great, you know? And, the, and, and were they like in the truck at the, at the time? Or were no, they, they were at the, they're, they're, they're just started at the restaurant. And they were at the point where they had like 20-minute waits, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they the were glory, still the like popular. Days. Yeah, they were still popular, but like... I remember they started peaking right at those times because yeah. when we started going, every every other time we'd go, the line was longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. Uh, and then, so we had a love for in and out We had a love for fried chicken and Howland Rays. And we understood the concept of supply and demand. And we realized like Howland's amazing and they're doing a great job. But obviously the, the, the demand is more than the supply at the moment, you know? Mm-hmm. And we, me personally, I would never jump into anything that I don't have any experience in or that somebody that's part of me doesn't have any experience in. So... If I didn't know Dave, I wouldn't even consider it anything. But because I knew Dave was an extremely talented chef, had been in culinary his whole life, worked at some of the best places. And the current place he was working at was called, I think, Elf Cafe. Mm. And they specialized in using spices to flavor their food because mm. I think it was all vegan food. So they had like a huge range of spices they used. So it was almost like perfect that he, he was like so associated with spices. So I remember I, I, started, I kind of started thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, like what, what, you know, like what could we do? Like what, what's something like, how could we like make hot chicken a little bit bigger in LA, but not necessarily like, like I didn't want to copy Howland Ray's. I didn't want to like take any of anything away from them because they were like great, you know, like yeah. they had everything down. And I didn't want to be like the people that were like, oh, let's just try to do what Howland's doing. I was like, you know, we, we have different things in mind. You know, we loved the concept of Nashville hot chicken, but we love fried chicken and we love in and out So we're like, dude, we can combine these into one thing. So we started thinking of this fast, casual nashville hot chicken place that was just a very simple menu that you know because you know how is amazing but it's, it's a, sometimes you go on the menu it's like big you know you have legs breasts thighs tenders right. breast sandwich it gets confusing sometimes and even for the kitchen it's hard for them to keep up sometimes because they're getting so many different orders yeah so we realized that one way we can cut down on like wait times is by having a very limited menu uh and being a fan of fried chicken, I realized there's only two real ways that you people eat fried chicken. That's in a sandwich or by hand. You know, there's not really right. much. Uh, what do you, you don't need a salad. Yeah. Nobody really, yeah, you eat it by your hand with. I mean, you or, could have it in a salad. Yeah, chop that like, shit up. Exactly. Put it on lettuce, but romaine. Like, exactly, but like my 
but no one's gonna come yeah. to a restaurant for that, right? Exactly. But the majority yeah. is like people like to eat it with their hands, the yeah. bone in ones, and they like to eat uh, the ones in the sandwiches. Right. So I was like, there's and tenders were always my favorite piece of chicken, funny enough. But I was like, dude, there's one piece of chicken that Holland doesn't use at the moment, which is tenders, which happens to be my favorite chicken. Mm -hmm. We want to do an in and out concept with a limited menu. We can take tenders, we can turn tenders into sandwiches also. So we started thinking of like a, a like a menu concept, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like as we were thinking of all this, we started working on the actual recipe because we realized that it can't be like a half-assed recipe, especially if you're trying to yeah. like follow up a Holland raise, you know, like you can't just go out there and be like, hey, here's my, you got to take your time. You got to do, you know, a, a lot of like deep research, mm -hmm. a lot of like, a lot of fried chicken. We eat so much fried chicken. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but literally like every single day, I want to say for like seven months or something like that, we were just cooking. And, and this is around what time? Like a couple years ago? This like is around like uh, right. So we opened up the parking lot May 2nd. Of? So uh, 2017. 2017. You looked at your fingers. You know, I was had, had it? Yeah, I was had it on there. That's why I was like, let me wow. just remember. The, it's like my birthday. I'm like, what the fuck? What was the date on there? <laughs> so but, May 2nd, 2017? Uh, 2017. So we started, what did like, so we started working on it like around like, December, November, I want to say, like we're starting with the concepts and working on the recipes and just, you know, and, and obviously like, here's the funny thing about it is like, obviously none of us had like any money in the bank, you know what right. I mean? We're all just, so yeah, I was going to ask where does, where does, so you guys, okay. So before we get to the money part, so you are doing all this testing, seven months, yeah. eating fried chicken, cooking fried chicken. Having no well, idea. Before, but before we even get to that yeah. part. So you guys all went to Holland Ray's and you guys all shared this experience. It wasn't all at the same time. Okay. So I went first with one of my like neighbors yeah. and I had it for a long time after before. Right. Dave was actually vegetarian at the time. He mm. didn't eat meat. Mm -hmm. And I actually broke at, at the time. Key, key, yeah, key those are things I broke that because I was like, dude, I'm like, you have to like, because yeah. as I was like pitching, and he wasn't all about fried chicken at the moment either, because he was more into like French and like you know like yeah the French high, cuisine, like the high end stuff. That I, yeah. I hate that, dude. I hate that stuff. <laughs> but I was like, dude, I'm like, you know, I was trying to like convince him like fried chicken, fried chicken. He's like, dude, I don't know. He's like, you know, I, he's like, I probably could make great fried chicken, but he's like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of fried chicken. You know what I mean? But I was like, dude, I'm like, you got to try this place. I'm like, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I convinced him after a while, and I took him to Howland Rays, and I broke his vegetables with that sandwich, and he and he loved it. Of course it's a great sandwich and then he became more and he started getting more and more into the i saw it like i saw and he's very like he gets once he gets influenced by something he's like in it yeah and i saw him he started to love fried chicken and, and after that he was like just every spot he was, he was like trying it and like getting deep into detail and like just going back into his books and all this stuff so <laughs> and then the funny thing is so we're working on the like, rest like where's where, where this in the book yeah, like, like where's page this seven dude yeah. like buttermilk <laughs> i don't know but um so we started like i was like he's like oh we have to obviously start working on a recipe so we're like slowly working on a recipe and dude we're spending like a hundred bucks a day buying groceries when we don't even have like we barely have any money because i was i was like unemployedish at the time doing acting not making money he's working at a restaurant paying rent trying to save whatever he can off it and, you know, Tom's doing his thing. And at, at, at the beginning, like, none of us really had anything to put in. And we didn't even know what we were going to put in once we were ready. Yeah. So we're cooking for, like, we're Did you even know what the ingredients were? Like, who came, like, I mean, we knew the chicken. Chicken. Well, we had but the chicken spices, was one of the ingredients. All, yeah, chicken. So that, <laughs> really, we knew for it? sure that that was one of them. So here's the, so that, like, that, that's one thing. That the, I understood that this team could work. Because I was like, okay, I love fried chicken. And I know how to, like, articulate what, what I want out of something. So I was like, and Dave could make that, you know? So I was like... What we did was we started like slowly working out. So we tried a few places that we liked, you know, like Gus's and Honey's Kettle and all these different places. And we kind of tried to see the best of all the things that we liked about yeah. them. And then we kind of had a base of where we wanted to go with like the flavor. Not, not so necessarily, but we kind of had like a David at least did. Like he knew what he was trying to put in there. Yeah. Um, and then we sort of started working on it. So the first day we made it, I remember it wasn't good. It was good, but it wasn't like good. It was like very like human -y And I was like, eh, it's all right. And we cooked another one right after. And it was okay. And we cooked another one. And then again, like so, you went and, and bought like the fryer and everything. No, we were cooking at his house. Dude, oh, at his on house a, on yeah, a deep pod. Fire, yeah. yeah, like no, yeah. just on a pod. We'd fill it up with oil, yeah. and it was very like very like uh, scrappy. You know, yeah. we were just on our make, feet, make trying sure. our best. Yeah, yeah, we were trying our best, and a lot of the like breakthroughs in the recipe happened accidentally. Like things that we did that we were like, oh, did you put this here? And it was like, no, well, this can go together really well, and we would put in the oh, it goes together really well. So we had like a lot of like uh, I want to say like help from the universe. We like to call it. You know what I mean? And then, so we're doing this for all this time. And again, we have no idea what we're actually going to do when we say, okay, we're ready to open up tomorrow. We have no idea. We have $0, yeah. zero locations. We have nothing. We just and, have- And you guys are all doing your thing. Like, was this supposed to be started off as like a side project? Like, it kind of was, man, because we told a lot of other friends about it. You know, we're like, hey, our, our, our initial idea was to like team up with like five friends and uh, chip in as much as we can buy like a food truck. You know what I mean? Until I kind of started doing the logistics and realized that it would be way too much to manage as a first thing for five new, you know what I mean? It, it, would yeah. just, it wouldn't make sense. 
Um, and a lot of people weren't even interested in it. They're like, ah, oh, no, you know, they're like, we're good. Like, you guys don't even know where we're going to do sure it. I'm sure they regret it now. Well, I'm sure, dude. But like, uh, so like nobody was really that about it. I remember Tommy was like, yeah, I got you guys. Let's do it off the bat. So we're like, okay, Tommy's a part of it. Uh-huh. Other friends were like, yeah, iffy. They would come sometimes. Sometimes they wouldn't to try. Like sometimes they wouldn't even come try to I mean, did, what was, what was, obviously we knew Dave's role, but what was your role and what was Tommy's role? My role, I knew was going to be mo- most of the marketing, uh, a lot of the uh, brand work and building up like the, the, the face of the brand. Uh, just, I knew that I was going to have to do everything else besides the food in order to make Dave's big. Like yeah. I, I, I was doing like Instagram comic time. So I right. had like a slight idea of how to grow followers. So I realized I need to use a lot of that. Um, so I did a lot of that. And obviously when we started the actual thing, we all needed to work it. And then Tommy, funny enough. So when the time came, when the food was ready and we were like, okay, so where are we going to actually do this? Uh, Tommy found, so where Tommy's flower shop is, the owner of that plaza owns the plaza across the street, which is the parking okay. lot. Ah. And Tom said, well, we want to do like a little food thing there, like a little food concept. And he's like, yeah, for sure. He's, 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 he's kind of for free. He's like, yes, I have a spot for free. He gave it to you for free. He gave us a spot for free Maybe. initially. Because they were already in a spot across the street, right? Across the street. So he gave us initially, a little spot Until for free. he started finding, finding out. Well, also, probably no one's <laughs> parking there at night. No, there were. Dude, there was a lot of parking there. Oh. There was only one spot that we had available. And oh, we really? had to like leave things there to make sure that nobody parked there. Oh, wow. Especially yeah. like at first we wouldn't because, but when we eventually got more popular, we would have to leave things there so people wouldn't take those spots because otherwise, like, we didn't have a place to open. Right. So Tom was like, oh, we got a parking lot. We were going to do it in this parking lot. So like, okay, so how much money do we have? And we all like took whatever we have and we combined it up to like 900 bucks is what oh, we all geez. had together. So we're like, okay, so we're like, <laughs> we need to start this concept with $900. So we went shopping and we bought like a fryer for like, you know, Craigslisting and just like scrapping it up. We're just scrapping. You didn't know? ask your parents or friends or anybody for no, money? No, no. We, well, I, again, like we were doing all this because we want to help our parents and want to help our families, you know, because yeah. not, none of us were in the best financial positions. Right. You know, we we're all just kind of getting to that point where we're getting older and our parents are getting older and we kind of need to take over the financial load. So we we're like, it wasn't like we we're going to like, hey, we need a bunch of money to start something to help you guys with. We felt, I, I was yeah, like, yeah. we do this ourselves. So we scrapped what we could. We did a lot of like, you know, odd jobs for a little and just got whatever we could, put it together. We did some scrappy shopping. And I remember we set a date. We're like, oh, this, this date we're going to open, you know, May 2nd. We're going to open that day and we're, we're going to you know, do our first pop-up. And uh, we did like a test setup at Tommy's house, I remember. And uh, we we're like, you know, and, and it's funny. We knew it would be successful. It's funny because we gave it to our me and parents. And they didn't. They're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. And we're like, damn, if our me and parents yeah, like this. If they say it's good. Like, yeah. you, and they're like strict. You know, you know, it's, you know like regular people are going to love this. So... I remember the next day, you know, we got up and we went and we like set up our tables and stuff like that. And we had friends that we invited and they were the only ones that obviously came because who knows about yeah. it. Party line. And we made like 40 bucks, but we were so happy. We're like, dude, make 40 bucks. Like, Profit. Yeah. yeah, no, no, just 40 in general. It was, <laughs> we had to go shopping the next day, but we were happy because like, we made something. We're like, yeah. somebody actually paid us and we took it. Yeah. And then the next <laughs> we day uh, we had to, again, like we had to take again do some more scrappy stuff get some more money because we obviously didn't have money to buy more supplies so we had to go you guys get, didn't have credit cards uh that's what we were saying like so we had to like do it on some credit cards pay people back like we were just yeah. trying like we we're just trying our best dude to make this thing happen uh second day uh we were like okay like there's no friends today so we have to do something so we cut tenders up into little pieces and we walked around passing them out to people you know to try to get people to come in and a few people came in and we made like i think like 90 bucks that day so we we're like dude like doubled up it's crazy you know wow and then the next day, again, it was, like, pretty, like, the next day, like, people were actually, like, walking in, like, oh, I heard about this place. Somebody told me it's good chicken. And I was, like, Day really? three. Like, huh? Day three. Like, day three, it was, like, yo, somebody from the bar told me there's really good chicken here. And I was, like, are you guys, yeah. somebody well, you guys that? talking about the location, let's talk about the location. It was, it was uh, on Hollywood and right off, uh, like, Normandy. Mm-hmm. So, it was right Which by, Which is kind uh, of a busy Cl- area. Like, it's a busy street. Yeah, like, Jumbo's yeah. Clown. Have you guys ever heard of Jumbo's Clown Room? No. Jumbo's? No. I've really- been in the parking lot where you guys were, but, like, I don't know what's around it. I so just- Jumbo's oh, is like days. one, uh, uh, like one section over, and it's um, it's like a really, really popular like burlesque bar. Mm, okay. And it's, the line is like out the door mm. at night, so we just go to the line and we pass it out to the line, and I guess they all talk back, and like the next day someone came back. So I think that day we made like a couple, like it was like a hundred something dollars, and we were just like, dude, this is crazy. Then the fourth day, dude, is when, like, it was like the birth of Dave's, I want to say, because uh, we we woke up and we had a message from Farley Elliott, who's the uh, yeah, over over under Eater LA. E- oh, Eater LA. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he uh, he had a damn. And he's like, hey, uh, I heard about. Some-. And I was like, man, he's on you-? top of it, huh? Dude, he was. And I, <laughs> but I was posting on Instagram twice a day, mad hashtags, and I was like spamming likes on people and just trying to get the page like in people's eyes. So 
of course, like some of the hashtags use is obviously going to catch his profile because he's looking at nothing but food. Yeah. So he's like, I want to just come check you guys out and whatever. I'm like, yeah, of course. And I, I knew who he was. So I was like, yeah, definitely, dude. And I told the guys, I'm like, yo, my fight's going to come tonight, so we got to be ready and like blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that night was kind of chill. It wasn't too crazy. And he came in at night and he's like, oh, what's up? And he's like, tell him about the concept. And we kind of told him our story of what we're doing and how we're like only four days in. And then uh, we gave him the chicken and he ate it. And he's like, yeah, good job, guys. And he wasn't like going crazy or anything, but he's like, yeah, yeah he's like, this is really good, guys. Like, good job, you know? And uh, he, you know, gave us a little more thing. He's like, all right, guys, I'll see you guys later. And he rolled out. And we're like, oh, that was so cool. And we were happy that he just came by. And we're like, this is crazy. He came by. And uh, we closed up that night. We went home. And me and Dave, I remember the next day we were at my house in the morning. We we're getting ready to go shopping. And I was like, dude, I'm like, do you think he might have like wrote an article or something about us? Like that fast. Because he told us, he's like, would you guys, he's like, because there was a place called Hotville, Hotville Hot Chicken, which had really good chicken, but they had a big Eater LA article the day before their pop-up, mm. and we went to that pop-up, and it was like a five-hour wait, so oh, it was very man. bad, it was like hectic for them, because they couldn't handle it, so I told him, I'm like, dude, I'm like, we don't want a situation like that, I'm like, we don't want to get two, I'm like, our fryer cooks three orders every 10, 15 minutes, you know, like, we're not ready for people, right. but we woke up, like I said, there was an article, dude, and the, the title was, oh. uh, East Hollywood's late night chicken stand will blow your mind. Wow. And he was just like, he gave us like so much love. It was ridiculous. We were almost like, dude, it's almost like if we wrote this for ourselves. You know, like if we were just trying yeah. to like hyper. Well, he was up. probably trying to be like very nonchalant he, at that time just yeah. to like not inflate your I guess, egos too man. much. I guess, but he's a great guy, dude. Yeah. But dude, we went to work that day. So we read that article and we sent it to friends and everybody's like, oh, wow. And like that's when people were kind of like, oh, well, look at these guys. They're actually doing something. Yeah. Dude, we go to work that day, and I remember my dad was there. So like, we go to work that day, and we were kind of late because we were supposed we'd open up at like seven or eight at the time. I don't remember, but we were there like twenty minutes later. Dude, there was like eighty people in line oh, in front geez. of our parking lot. And you guys, I'm assuming, were not happy about that. We were happy but scared. Like yeah. we were like, whoa, because before that, we you know we'd open, we would chill. One person would come in. Fifteen minutes later, another. Yeah. Twenty minutes later, one more. You're telling me you have eighty people standing already, kind of mad that you're late. Just because of that eater article. Just because of the eater article. Yeah. The day before, the day thing. Like so. So, so walk me through that. So I mean, at this point, Dave's cooking. Tommy's also cooking. Tommy was taking orders. And you're. Dave's cooking chicken. And you I were preparing doing, it, right? I, I was, yeah, I was putting them on yeah. plates. I was tossing the buns, and I was like, doing all the saucing and stuff like that. So, what happened this day? Eighty people show up. I'm assuming more showed up throughout the night. Like, yeah. were you guys able to fulfill the orders? Dude, that was like one of the most hectic days. I think we filled as many orders as we could. Some people ended up leaving because it was taking so long. But again, we were, and I was, I would go out and talk to people, and we didn't even have a system for how to take orders. So people were waiting outside, and I'd go take their order and come back in and write it down. And again, it's like three orders every 15 minutes. So by the time we give three orders, you gotta get three more. That's so. Nuts. So uh, I would go out and I would apologize every time. I'm like, I'm, we're so sorry, guys. It's only our fifth day, and we're like, we didn't know so many people were going to come. But like, it's going to take a long time. It might be this long of a wait. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But we got through it. We got through it, and we made the most we'd ever made. It was like, I don't even remember. It was like four or 500 bucks. Over. It was a good amount. It was like, whoa. Was it like, called Dave's Hot Chicken at the time? It was. It was and you had the Dave's. branding, logo, everything? We didn't have the logo. We had, uh, so we, uh, it's funny how it got named Dave's actually. So yeah, I was going to ask, why Dave's not, why not Tommy's, why not Armand's? Okay, so a couple reasons why. Okay, so. <laughs> One of the times when we were working on the recipe, we went to swap meet and there was like one rubber chicken hanging there. It was like a yellow rubber chicken, obviously. And then uh, Dave's like, yo, should we buy that chicken and name it Dave and make it like our mascot? And this was like two but months into making the recipe. I have a story about recipe. this chicken, by the way. You know, you're really? That's yeah, 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 go for it. So I was like, dude, I'm like, we totally should buy it and I'll like make it our spokesperson or whatever, like our, our thing. And it was our a figure. dollar, dude. We bought it for a dollar and we named him Dave. You know, He's, this is like a very famous toy for dogs, right? Yeah, I heard, dude. Like, my dog has one, and, like, I used to make videos, just random videos on, really? like, Snapchat and stuff back so in the day, funny. and, like, it would, like, people would, like, love it. They would keep, like, more videos, more videos. It was just the funniest thing, because it makes that noise, right, when you squeeze yeah, it. The, 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 yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, this chicken brought us, like, the best luck ever, dude. It was ridiculous. <laughs> like, a, a, after we bought that chicken, just everything was just going right for us, pretty much, you know? Like, just shit was going cool. Yeah. So, we named it, they, originally we wanted to call it, like, Hollywood Hot Chicken, but they were like, it sounds kind of gimmicky, and then we wanted to call it, like, Fire Cluck, because this was supposed to be, like, a food trick, and we're like, that sounds terrible, that sounds like yeah. diarrhea, you know, mm -hmm, if I got mm -hmm, the Fire Clucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Armand's Hot Chicken sounded absolutely terrible, it sounded like rotisserie chicken, I was like, no way. <laughs> Tommy's Hot Chicken was okay, but there was Tommy's Burgers, yeah. and then if you really think about it, like, if you're being practical, like... Dave is the chef, and yeah. he can, like. Even though we would suggest flavors, it, it was his expertise. Right. I was like, "Oh, we can't do that because this right. happens, and you got to cook this at this time and this at this time." And this, this, this. So we're like, "Dude, I'm like, it's your hot chicken, your Dave. You know, it's you made the recipe, so it's your hot. So it's Dave's hot chicken. So why would we name it anything else but Dave's hot chicken? Yeah. And then we had like the rubber chicken, so we kind of took we had a side shot of that, and we used that as our default picture yeah. for a while. Uh, the until, actual chicken. 
It was like a picture of the chicken, but not a picture of our chicken. So it was a picture ah, of the same chicken, but gotcha. like kind of with like a nice background. Yeah. And it was just like the face. So we did that for a <laughs> while, dude. And then this logo. So we, and then people would always like, it's funny because before we opened up days, we would hear people like, hey, we need a logo. We need a logo for our chicken. And they'd be like, oh, we're too busy. We're too busy. Oh, nobody give a shit. After that article and like a couple days after when it started getting really busy, dude, we had like five logos being sent to us like a day. Like people, hey, you want my logo? You want my logo? And we're just like, we're Like good. people designing this chicken? This chicken and just yeah. sending it to us in like thousands <laughs> of different ways. Like, but none of them were good. And then one of these, this guy, Gary, who actually does a lot of work for us, one day he uh-huh. sent this to us. He's like, hey, what do you guys think of this? And I saw it. I'm like, dude, I love that. I'm like, what the, f-? I'm like, how did you make that? He's like, he's like, I was actually just teaching my daughter how to use the program. <laughs> And uh-huh. I thought, well, I'll teach you guys. I would just make you guys this chicken. And he's like, I just like the way it ended up looking. And wow. we took it and we're like, this is the logo. And we took it and we, we made it the I logo. I love it. Copy wrote it, everything. And, and so how it. long were you guys at this parking lot? So we were at the parking lot for like six months, six to seven yeah. months. And dude, it was hard, man. Because you got to imagine like after the fourth day, you're seeing like tons of people. Yeah. The next day we went and bought a brand new fryer. We, we bought a big one so we could like do more orders. Get and a few hundred bucks more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> besides that, we don't want people to wait, dude. Like yeah. a lot of, the, we, we do, the, we, besides doing this for us, we also do because we have a love for people and we love like showing people love and that's what we used to get at Howl and Ray's. Like these are such people love and we're like, we, that's the only thing we, we want. We like that to. energy. Yeah. And we kind of want to do everything opposite. We're like dude, they're open at night. I mean, they're open in the morning. Let's be open at night. You know, let's not take any, let's not have yeah. any breast sandwiches. Let's not do any like of the fries and stuff. Like, yeah, that's we're not here to thing. compete. Yeah. And I was like, that's their thing we're trying to do our thing and we're complimenting one another yeah. ideally and actually johnny came to our pop-up dude yeah. like after yeah. the article like a few days after and they nice. showed us a lot of love yeah. dude and he, yeah i think we had we had him on a, uh, a few weeks, weeks ago, ago. Yeah. yeah about a month ago yeah. Yeah. yeah johnny's great yeah he's great dude he came he showed us a lot of love they invited us to like a howling party the next day we went there they gave us like a skateboard autograph so they were like great so we wanted to take that away too and just like show the customers a lot of love we give them stuff like on the house and things mm-hmm. like that so we didn't want them to like wait around for food we felt like it was unfair so we, when we got a bigger fryer we started pumping out orders but because the demand was so much we realized we had to be open like we I was about wanted, to say I still waited yeah dude it was, <laughs> I think it was like, dude, but it wasn't as long probably dude, it was crazy dude because we would have a system so our system was our fryer would cook about 18 orders every like 15 minutes okay. yeah, you would do like these batches right I yeah so every time we would get 18 orders it was a round that's one round so you can't put more chicken because it won't cook right so you put that aside and that's one round each round takes about like 35 minutes mm-hmm. to oh, be wow. done mm-hmm. so 15 minutes for the chicken another like 10 minutes for the fries because obviously it's an outdoor fryer with propane and oh, it's geez. like it's, it's not pump into his full capacity you have to leave things in there a little bit longer so each round take 30 minutes so if you were even there like seven o'clock let's say and you got there right when we opened and there's only four people ahead of you but the first guy orders like 10 plates and the second orders five and two well now you're automatically in the second round so even though you got there first you still have to wait like 35 minutes so yeah we couldn't have a lot of control of it and even if we added a second fryer we couldn't increase the amount of plates with it because we only had so much room to plate then we need to add another table so people were waiting for what three four hours at one point uh, at the peak four hours, dude, it wow. sucked. And that's when we realized, like, dude, we have to get out of here because we're like, we're defeating the purpose of But people to get- were still doing it. So, I mean- Oh, dude, they didn't care, dude. Like, they would come like, how long is the wait? Two hours. Okay, cool. Let me get two sliders. I'm like, damn, dude. And they would and just, just leave and come out. back. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, you were able to do that. You could like- Yeah, because you have a round and we give you an estimate. So we check, we're like, okay, well, there's three rounds here. That's an hour and 25 minutes. Got Your it. order will be ready in an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, in four hours, and- I could go to San Diego, come back and my orders. And you guys were, you guys were doing it, for how long were you guys doing it until selling out? Because you guys would sell out pretty much till, all till the time. Till we finished, yeah. Till we finished, we do. So we yeah. sell out. So we keep a certain amount of chicken. I think it's like a couple hundred pounds of chicken a day. And we'd start at like six, and we just and we'd sell out fast. So we we knew yeah. when we were sold out. So yeah. we would sell out by like ten, but it would just take a few hours after that to complete all the orders because yeah. we always have to wait till each round is done. So we'd sell out fast, and we'd actually turn away like hundreds of people a day because we we're already sold out. Right. Um. And so, yeah. And, in those in those like six seven months, um, what's like one thing that you was like. Just one moment that you really remember, you're like, damn, like this is gonna be very big. Hmm. Besides every night seeing all these people, like I, I mean, I'm sure that's crazy in and of itself, but just was there like a moment like someone maybe came or dude, did I think something? the moment was that night when we went and there was like all those people in line and it was funny because my dad was there, Tom's dad was there and stuff like that. And the the look on their faces when they saw that line, like they were happier than we were because you know, obviously they watched us like try to plan this thing for months, not knowing how successful it was going to be and seeing us kind of the first few days, like how much you guys make today? A hundred. And they're like, ah, okay. And 20. And then that day they come and they see like 90 people in line and they were like almost tearing up looking at us. Yeah. And, and they kind of looked at us and, and we had these like kind of panic look on our face and they were like, they kind of screamed like, don't worry guys, you guys are going to kill it. And we looked at our dad screaming that to us, yeah. like about to serve these hundred people in line for a pop-up that we started four days ago. And we were like, Damn, we're like, this could be something pretty interesting here, dude. We're like, this, this is not just going to like, 
we're like, unless we mess this up, this is not just going to go away, dude. <laughs> so you, know? you finally decide to move into the location that we're at yeah. now, which is Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, in Hollywood. And um, at that point, did you guys have to raise funding? Did you have the funding necessary? I mean, what, so what was what that like? So what we did is uh, when we were initially planning out Dave's, uh, Tommy has an older brother named Gary, who's, again, been our friend for a long time. Different Gary than the designer Gary. Different Gary than the designer Gary, yes. Uh, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, anytime. Designer stuff. And then so he was originally supposed to be a part of Dave's too, but we didn't need him at the parking lot level. So he was more like a customer at the parking lot level. <laughs> but when we were ready to transition into a brick and mortar is when we really needed him because uh, he was pretty experienced in having a business. He'd had a few businesses before. And he was a lot older than us. Not a lot older, but older enough to be more disciplined. Yeah. Because we're still young and we were making money and we're kind of spending it and we weren't like necessarily being as smart with it as we should have being so new to it. Um, so we realized that we might have, we, we also need him to come and like kind of chill us out. But so dude, I'm talking like, four, like, cause about like three months in, like it was just too hectic. Like you're talking like our days would go, we would wake up at nine o'clock in the morning. We were, were you guys doing, sorry, were you guys doing anything else at this time or had you nothing, all quit your jobs? Absolutely. No, we all quit our jobs. You all quit your jobs. I quit my and... agency. I called him like, I can't go to any more auditions. Dave called the restaurant. He's like, I quit. Tom at the time wasn't working anywhere, I think. So we just, it was a hundred percent days. Yeah. So and during the day you were like trying to just do marketing, whatever. No, preparing man, that's that what I'm saying is what? like the, the Dave's would take up 99% of our day. Like we didn't like planning something wasn't even in our mind. Like you, you couldn't know, you couldn't go to movies. I missed my cousin's wedding, dude. One of that. Cause like you, you, it was like your business. It was in the peak stages of growing. Like it's very like, we realized that we needed to be there all the time. It's like a baby. Yeah. You want, you don't want to lose that consistency. Yeah, you like, can't go to your cousin's wedding and leave your baby at home. Yeah. If you don't have a babysitter, yeah, yeah, I can't exactly. let the two guys run around their own. Right. And like, you're, you're talking about like, you're, right. you're, again, you're, you're peaking, you're, you're trying to grow it as right. much as possible, you know, and, uh, nobody else is going to watch it for you. So we gave up everything. Dude, we, I'm sorry, we would wake up at nine o'clock. We would go shopping. We, we'd go to like depot, wherever we we're going to go and buy our stuff. We'd go back to like, uh, Tom's house and we had like a big kitchen. So we'd start our prep and we, we were cutting fresh kale at the time. And that would take like two hours just to cut all the kale. Dave would be cutting kale for two hours. I would be like, you know, f seasoning the chicken, which takes like the whole prep of chicken takes about three hours, three and a half mm -hmm. hours. Uh, including like the brine time and everything right. so that would take time and then the meantime tommy would have to drive to our parking lot location and set things up lightly and by the time we would come back we would be slightly done with the food and then he would come in and help us finish yeah. it we would pack up pounds and pounds of food and like all these different things into the van you know because we had a lot of different things that we use you know like lemonades and all this stuff and a bunch of stuff like your slaws and your pickles like everything because every day you're moving it's like you're, every day you're a moving restaurant and then we would get there at like six o'clock and it would take like an hour to like, you know, bring out the fryer and we have storage for the fryer. So we have to bring it out and re-clean it every morning. We clean it every night and you have to set that up and you set up your tables and take all the stuff out the van. So you're just about ready at seven when there's people already there, like watching you set up. And then from seven till two o'clock, it was nonstop service. And then by like two o'clock, we'd finish orders. We'd take like a 20 minute break and then we'd spend two hours cleaning up. Yeah, because it's a lot of trashes yeah. and you have yeah. fryers and you have your oils on the tables and you got to clean that and you got to drain your fryer and you got to clean your fryer, you got to degrease it and it's taking hours and you have to pack all this stuff back into your van, drive it back to your house, put it there, start again, next go day. home at 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m., sleep, wake up at 9, do the whole thing over again, six days a week. Shit. So you had one day off, which was a Sunday, I think. Okay. And we were so tired from the week, we just spent it sleeping. Yeah. Get back up on Monday, you start at the same cycle. Did you again. like the grind and the hustle? I loved it, dude. It was the greatest time ever. It was the greatest time of my life. I never had, I, I wasn't a kitchen guy, but I just, I, I, it was like the best time to just serve up and like, you know, seeing all the people's reactions when they would come in and like, yeah. it was just like crazy, dude. Like, yeah. so many people that doubted us and family, and they were just like, oh my, like they were praising us. It was like, <laughs> It was epic times, dude. It was some of my favorite times in life, though. And the three of us getting to do it together was so special because yeah. obviously now we have so many employees and we're not in the kitchen as much right. because you know we have different priorities also with expansion and stuff. But dude, thinking back to those days, just the three of us doing yeah. that for those six months, it was yeah, it was amazing. Dude. And was most of the growth? Um, it sounds like most of the growth was organic, but um, like, did, were you also like, I don't know, advertising and things like that, or how would? Dude, oh, so we did most of just advertising with Instagram, just posting pictures once or twice a day. We're talking about it today, man. Food posts. They're killing it on Instagram. Dude, yeah. like Everything else is doing bad, but yeah, food, food posts People love still food, Because I don't fucking care about your vacation. Yeah. yeah, people don't. Dude, think about it. Like, what are you going to really post that other people care about? It's not yeah. too much. If you really get down to the... 
to, to the like bottom of it. Which is funny because a lot of people go like, "Oh, stop posting food." Like, I don't care about your food, but it's then, like, yeah, but do. the food they definitely counts. care about it. It's like, food. what do you care? What do you want to? Yeah. You want to post people, my... There's two things people care about on Instagram: chicks and, and chicks. Chicks and chicks, yeah. Chicks and chicks. Exactly, dude. <laughs> no, it's very true, dude. Like Instagram, and I feel like because everybody's on Instagram all the time, that's where yeah. you get all your information from. It's where you get it's all your news. Is there your food. everything? It's, it's like the better dude. Yelp. It's, dude, yeah. it's like everything. Like I find everything. Through my Instagram, like right. sponsor posts that I see, I'm you, buying. You can show. message on Instagram, and like <clears throat> yeah. everything. The, the dude, so. communication, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so how quickly? How quickly did did you like? come up with the realization that shit we need to get a physical space like a brick and mortar as opposed to staying dude i think like within the first like first, month first month first month we were like we need a place but obviously it takes a while to find people you know they're always like uh, you know even with how like, they're always like oh what's your next location? and they don't realize like all the logistics of actually opening up another location right. being as busy as you are as one location you know like it takes a lot of effort to negotiate leases make sure you're getting the, the right deal to make sure you're not going to pay too much to make sure your reno renovation is not going to be crazy to make Make sure you get all your permits in time to open up. Like, it's a lot of small details that people don't really realize, mm -hmm. and they're always like, "Oh, when's it coming? When's it coming?" So, within the first month or two, people are always like, "Oh, you guys need a store. You guys need a store." And we're like, "Yeah, we're looking, but it's you know, it's obviously hard. Like, yeah, it's yeah. hard, dude. You need credit. You need money. You Especially need here in LA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people don't take the small things into consideration. No, oh, I mean, you guys have a line. Get a store. It's yeah, like, I mean, are there going to be tenant improvements? Like, are you guys going to build anything yeah. out? Is there an existing how, kitchen in place? Yeah, how much is our trap? sales going to grow when I mean, we go to our stuff. brick and mortar? Like right now, are we able after all? this are we able to afford it every exactly day? you know you yeah. need employees now you have yeah. like about the rent so obviously the first health month, code yeah. LA County health exactly code. so like yeah. and even the rent like obviously the first month it was free for us he said yeah, good because he thought it was like a hot dog stand and i remember the first day he came <laughs> they give you cute, any TI? cute kids uh creating a Dude, lemonade stand the here day this guy came <laughs> He came uh, at the peak of like the. He came the second month, yeah, because right? he wouldn't come to the parking lot a lot. Huh. He had like a little office. He came. It was in the second month, dude. He came when there was like people like in line, people waiting. It was like maybe two hundred people in that little area. And he was, I mean, he's like, Dras, he's like, what is this? He's like, I thought you were opening up a hot dog stand. He's like, this is a restaurant, bro. Like he was like <laughs> tripping, and he was a great guy though. He taught us a lot about business, and he taught us like. The value of money and like it's business. Like he was like an uncle to us, but he's like, dude, he's like, I gotta charge you guys rent. He's like, you guys are making a ton of money. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. And we understand. He's like, dude, this guy's right. That's how business works. Like we're yeah. we're on his property. Yeah, if you were him, you would do the same thing. Of course, we have. I mean, the fact that he was willing to give it to you for free, I think, says oh, yeah. a lot. He's I like, think a lot of people like wouldn't. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like if they were just like, nah, we're gonna charge and you from the get go. We appreciated that, dude. And we, but he raised the rent on us like every month. <laughs> every month he would come in and be like, this Good much more. This month yeah. we're like, dude, come There's on, no man. rent control on parking lots. I'll tell you. I know. I was like, I'm telling you, dude. Every month he would be. Like the gas, like a little bit more next month. Yeah, right? Like you're just having two fifty every time. Yeah, We're like, come yeah. on, dude. <laughs> so then we, uh, we, you know, obviously we found our location and we took uh, took like again a few months to renovate it. So yeah. we'd have to do the parking lot and that same activity for all those times and at the same time find some time to come here right, in the mornings right. help with renovation help with designing it go right. back to work and i was actually asking pat because i know that he went to the parking lot a few times i never had the chance unfortunately no. i was asking him and obviously you know the answer but was there any downtime between Parking lot Dave's and Dave's the restaurant. Yeah, I figured. Maybe yeah. like a day. Downtime for like the customers, but not for us. We took right. like Yeah, two yeah, days for the off. customers. Yeah. We took two days off between the last day of the parking lot and the first right. day of the brick and mortar. Right. And that two days was spent with invite customers working out our systems and like how the kitchen is going to run and yeah. how things are going to happen. You know? Right. A whole uh, different, like, whole yeah. different project. And then the whole other month was spent because obviously you're, uh, I feel like it's a weird thing, but. Uh, I feel like uh, people don't realize what you're opening up a, so you're a pop-up, obviously. We're working on the food. We're making the recipes. We're doing everything. We know it like the back of our hands. Now we have employees and we're having to write down the recipes and give it to them. And you have to realize that the first month or so, it's going to be a little off because they're not going to always do it right. They're mm -hmm. going to do their own thing and half ass. So you need to be really on top of what the flaws are of your food in that first month. It's right. like very. If, like, God forbid someone orders like a mild and you send them a Reaper and they're like. <laughs> besides, no, besides that, that's a big one. But like yeah. little small things. For instance, like we, to we like our buns very toasted at Dave's. So we toast them up very nicely. You know, and when we first started here, like the employees weren't as good as toasting the buns. So we get, we get a lot of the buns that went out were not as toasted as they right. should be, which makes makes a sandwich slide, which takes away some of the flavor. So obviously if you're not on top of that, you just let that slide, then that habit gets passed down from like employee to employee. And then before you know it, you lose those buns and you lose some of the customers that right. love. And even, even rubbing like how much peppers you're putting on the chicken. If you put too much, you get peppers on the top of your mouth. You don't like it. You put too little, you're not tasting enough rub and it's like unsatisfying. Right. So there's all these different little details, you mm -hmm. know, that you have to be on top of for that first couple right. months. 
And at the same time, we were working. We're working the kitchen, figuring that out, and then figuring out how different it is to run a, a restaurant with health code and employees versus the three of us yeah. in the parking lot. So it was like a crazy learning experience. Really? And, and I mean, like, yeah, learning experience because like none of you, I mean, I know you said mentioned Tommy had a family business and his yeah. brother ran, ran, ran a business, but um but not like you, none of you guys had really done your own thing so you no. like and you were doing all, the, all this at the same time because you had the, you know pe people lining up at the door but now exactly. you're trying to figure out how to hire employees how to train exactly. them how to do all that stuff so exactly. how quickly did that come up like how were you guys it was uh again it was pretty quick because we we're dude we're uh, and me particularly I'm, I'm very like i pay a lot of attention to detail and i, and I like to pre-plan and over plan so right as we were starting we were already just in the mind state of like what's not working and how do we fix it? And because you obviously need to figure those out because it's a new system. Like things are very new. Like you you have different fryers, you have different breading area, you have a different station. Food is coming out at different times. Now we're taking out twenty four orders every seven minutes versus eighteen orders every twenty minutes. So now you have extra chicken. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with that extra chicken so people are not getting cold chicken? Which right. which happened the first few times because again you're just learn. You don't realize you're you're in the speed of working and you're not used to having cold tenders because at the parking lot tenders come out they go on plates they go out piping hot over here because we were stacking them miles medium some were getting mixed up and one might have been like a couple minutes older than the other so you weren't getting consistency in your tender so figuring out drop times how much do you drop when do you drop it how do you communicate this you know breads like how much bread yeah. do you have to and, and did you only learn kind of by doing or were there other sort of resources that you guys kind of leaned on to dude like we learned by doing and learned by Dave so Dave obviously was, you know he's a kitchen guy he has a serve service yeah. for years he knows kitchen systems so he would tell us the things you know like the you know the basic stuff that we didn't even know like right. dishwashing stations can't be like, random stuff like he knew you know six inches off the ceiling and mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm. that and all this stuff and then gary was kind of helping with the um, you know payrolls and like uh you know the side all the business the side accounting of side yeah and then at that time i was kind of like peeking on like marketing you know like i was just pushing hard on marketing because we were growing and i wanted to like hit that growth head on with more growth so we were all kind of like pushing in our individual fields and at the same time like trying to run this place but it I mean, it went great, man. Like within the first month, we were open. We started opening at six. Within the first month or two, we're like, do we need yeah. to get more hours? Because people are like, it's not fair anymore. We're a restaurant. There's no excuse for us to be open at six. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, what the fuck are we doing for six hours out of the day? So we 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 realized that we needed like obviously like a bigger place to prep. So we you know we took time. We actually have a big warehouse kitchen in North Hollywood that we prep out of. It's mm -hmm. like a big. I don't even know how many thousand square foot that's like pumping out food and being delivered to Dave's. And, you know, we took all these extra steps to make sure that we can supply people with food for the entire day. And that in itself takes a lot of time, you right. know, because you, you have to do it gradually. You can't just go from six to 12. Mm -hmm. You have to go from six to four and six to two and then back and then 12. Right. And just so you can see the gradual growth of how many people are coming mm -hmm. in. And basically what we would do is we would, we maxed out at six the amount of customers we were seeing, so we'd switch to four, and during four, it was like slowing down the first couple hours, and then it would pick up again, so mm -hmm. we knew we had to go earlier and earlier and earlier until we hit right. our 12. And then now we're realizing that we need to add another hour to the opening and one more tonight, because every day at night, we're having to like send an employee to cut the line at the end, which is mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. 60, 70 people deep at 11.45 when we oh, close. Geez. So it's now we're we're still in the learning process. Now For we're sure. learning. I mean, how it's only been like a year and a half since you've been in a brick and mortar. Exactly, and we just got our second location. I don't yeah. know if you guys know North yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, so we'll talk. So let's talk a little bit about the expansion. So I have an interesting story. When Pat and I first came, I, I don't know if Pat had been before the first time you and I actually got here. You might have, or you might have tried it with your brother. And uh, we came and we sat down. We had the food, and I hadn't been to Howland Rays yet. And I remember walking out, and I told him, and we were having this discussion. I was like, this is the next, like, in and out. Yeah, that's and awesome. I was like, this is – because I had heard about Holland Rays and how the lines are three, four hours. And I was like, that doesn't sound like in and out, right? Yeah. You know, but with this, you know, we waited 20, 30 minutes in line, got our food, like, in a second. Yeah. And so it just felt more like it could become exactly. something like that, right? And, I, I mean, we, we discussed it. I think we mm -hmm. were both like, this is going to yeah. be, like – growing this, pretty fast this is more built for yeah. that type yeah built yeah. built to scale like built to franchise That's like exactly it, i mean because i had worked in i was working in hospitality at the time so i was like this seems like something that definitely is going to go in that direction and i was and i didn't know any of you guys and hadn't heard right. of you guys but i was like i'm hoping pray that the founders like just do take it in that direction because yeah you could just tell that that was and, the initial like and that's plan. what we planned dude that's yeah. what we planned from the beginning yeah. like the ingredients we used from right. the start were right. like 
are we going to be able to scale with these and not change right, them? Right, exactly. You, know? you don't want to start off with a particular type of bread. People love Correct. it. Yeah. Then you're going to one, two, three locations. Yeah, and then you're baking the bread fresh. And then yeah, you're like, I don't know if I could break the bread fresh course, and drive through. Yeah. You can't, man. Yeah. You have to pre-plan. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I pre- we pre-plan a lot. So obviously Dave being the chef and being the guy who's like, we should use these buns and they're this and this and this. I'm like, dude, no, man. I'm like, imagine having five locations. Right. How many of those buns are you going to be able to get for those locations? Yeah. Are you going to be able to fresh bake buns for five locations, seeing 500 people a day or something like that? No, you're not. It's going to be a, a hassle. You're going to change your bread midway. You're going to lose a lot of customers because you're dropping your... I'm like, what we start with is what we have to finish with. Right. So whatever ingredients we're going to use now need to be the ingredients we finish with. So let's make sure whatever we're buying now is not like, oh, well, we're a pop-up. We're only serving a few people. Let's buy the most gourmet stuff. No, right. eventually you're going to have to change it. You know what I mean? So we bought like very like... And me, I'm a fan of like, I don't want to call it generic food, but like, you know, like the basic, like simple, like, yeah, like simple, like hostess cupcakes and things like that. Like I like those versus like <laughs> yeah. the organic cupcakes, right. you know, in my opinion, they yeah. taste better. They're easier to eat. They're more fun to eat. Yeah. You're you know? not, you're not a trendy guy. You're like not into the whole like Dude, veganism yeah. and nah, gluten free. I, I like and, yeah. easy, cool yeah, yeah. comfort foods, you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm into Give the Give me Twinkies, stuff. Oreos, in exactly, and out Dude, like exactly. Domino's. Like it's, and I love that you can press in and out because I know a lot of people think we're very Howland inspired, which we are. The, obviously the hot chicken aspect comes from Howland Ray's, but I would say like 80% of the inspiration behind Dave's is in and out For sure. You know, that's where we spent more of our time than right. chicken places. This was in and out We loved in and out We loved their system. We loved their food. We loved their menu. We loved that all the years they had been open, they never changed things up. Like you see all these restaurants and they're constantly trying to please people. You know, right. it's like, oh, oh, people are vegan now. Oh, here's a vegan sandwich. Oh, you guys like chicken? Here's a chicken sandwich. You know, you look at in and out they're like, oh, you guys are vegan? That's fine. We don't have any. It's just double-double. Oh, you guys have any chicken? Chicken's popular. No, no chicken, just double-double. And that's <laughs> yeah. they, they present their product and like, this is our product and we're not going to change it. Right. If you guys want it, get it. And that's why they have so many customers because they're not trying to please. Right. They are just, who they are. Yeah, they're just putting it like, this is what it is. And it's the same with Dave's, I feel like. From the day we started, we've never changed anything. Mm-hmm. Like, we never added anything to the menu. We never, it's a simple one, two, three menu and all of it is tenders. It's two tenders, two sliders or a tender and right. a slider. You know, right. it's. It's, it is like the in and out of like chicken sandwiches. Right. You know, you come in, it's fast, it's fresh. It's it's made, the menu is simple for it to be fresh for you every time. Mm-hmm. You know, we know that all, we know we could have a line of a thousand people. We, we just need to drop tenders, just drop them at the right time so none of them are getting cold and we just serve those people super fast. We don't need to wait to see what they're going right. to order. But you, you talk about like even just the process of just preparing this chicken like throughout the day, you have yeah. another facility, all this stuff. Is that built for scale too and how how so? So that's built. Okay. So the thing about that is like, you do have to change some things. So for instance, like right now we're, we obviously, uh, we package our own sauces. So we have employees that, you know, we'll package us, they'll pour them out until right. they're going to close them. They do like four or 5,000 a day. It's a lot of time yeah. it takes up for them to pour sauces. Obviously right now we're going through a few different companies to see which one of them can package the sauce for us without sacrificing any flavor. And you know, that makes it easier for us because we can order bigger amounts right. of it future restaurant owners and future locations can order big amounts of it and they don't have to worry about making it in house. You know, same with the slaw. It's a very easy process. You know, it comes in, you have a certain recipe and you order the, you know, kales and white cabbages and everything. And you have a certain amount, like 50 grams of this and this, and you have a certain amount of sauce you put in there to mix it up. So that's easy to scale. You send it out to people. Um, we're also working on making the chicken easier to, I mean, it's not hard. Like any restaurant could probably prep their own chicken. Mm -hmm. Not like we're in this restaurant. I think we see, on average, maybe like 1,200 people a day. Okay. So it's almost impossible to have the time to prep like right. in such a small kitchen because the kitchen is obviously pretty small. So, you know, that's why we have that side warehouse for the right. prep. But future locations that are a little bit bigger that obviously when we got this Dave's, we were seeing two, 300 people at our parking right. lot. We didn't know it was going to go up to that much more people. So right. you've outgrown the location. We've, we do, we outgrew the location like months ago. But so location number two, where is it at? So location number two is in North Hollywood. Okay. It's on Lancashire and Magnolia. It used to be in Arby's. Oh, nice. So we... So they kind of have the grease trap and all the hood and all the Dude, kind of stuff in place. And yeah. It's so hilarious because um, the owner was an Armenian franchisee. Oh, wow. And he has a lot of Popeyes. So he has a fried chicken. <laughs> okay. So I feel like he's been to Dave's because his Arby's <laughs> looked like a Dave's. It was red walls, black ceilings, wood grain. Perfect. It, it was literally like this guy had come to Dave's and he was like, you know what? I like these guys' design. I'm going to design my store like that. So we bought him. We're like, dude, we don't even need to change much. too much here. Like, yeah. we just basic things right. that we need to change so that's why we're like trying to speed it up and get it open because also we need to kind of start separating people because we have really outgrown the location and 
it's becoming like way too much of it. Yeah, it's a strain on the location itself. Dude, things are breaking like constantly because you're having a thousand people use it a day right. over and over again, seven days a week. Yeah. It's not going to last. So um, when is that opening? The, we, we're hoping to get open by mid-August. Of this you, year? Of this year, yeah. Because we, I mean, even though all the cosmetic stuff is done, like obviously still ordering your equipment and hiring the employees to be able to like handle the opening, it, that's what takes a lot more of the time plus you're like permitting and your approvals and things like that. So... That's what takes more of the time. Otherwise, it's cosmetically like very ready. So, and then we have. Um, and it's not too far from this location, right? It's not too far, and it's no- dude. Like we have a lot of customers that come out from North Hollywood, and mm-hmm. there's like you know a few hot chicken places out there that are yeah. like you know they're not open all the time, and they don't have like right. the best hours. And a lot of who want a Dave's in North Hollywood, like and it's inconvenient. Like I would never drive to North Hollywood to eat anything, so I, I don't expect anybody from North Hollywood to drive down to eat Dave's unless they're really craving it. Nobody wants to drive 30, 40 minutes. But it's closer traffic. to Burbank and kind of that area as yeah. well. So yeah, exactly. So It'll service can, that part of town. Yeah, too. so you can you know it's it's a great for a second location because you're kind of like you know you're spreading out your people, but not too much. Right. You know? And then the third location is going to be on uh, Wilshire and Normandy. Got it. So so more LA. It's more yeah. LA. It's, it's a lot of like office buildings and stuff. Right. So it's going to, you know, you're going to do a lot of like. Is it a support. standalone like this or is it's it? It's not a standalone. It's actually part of, uh, so it's like a, it's like a, on the side of, the, so it's like basically it's like a long street right between like uh, Normandy and Alexandria, I think. And there's like mm-hmm. a halal guys on one corner mm-hmm. and then like a Starbucks and a bunch of businesses that go down the street. And then the Dave's will be on the other corner. Got it. So there's a uh, good amount of foot traffic. Dude, there's tons of office buildings. Like yeah, there's like that's big. thousands of units. I know a lot of offices buildings. that order yeah. like Howland Rays. Yeah. Dude, stuff that like used that. to be yeah. a Togo's. That place used to be a Togo's. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm never eating Togo's I've in done, my life. Never eaten, yeah, yeah. They were there for like I think eighteen once years. Once out of desperation, yeah. I, I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were there for like eighteen years. So if yeah. Togo's is there for eighteen yeah, years. Yeah. I highly doubt Dave's will like. And it's and that location will be more of like third party deliveries, focusing right. on third party deliveries because it's I'm sure like that area is lunch breaks. Yeah, nobody wants some people trying to lunch breaks. Traffic. So it'll be like a good go-to for them. Right. So obviously you guys are growing at a very fast pace. It's been a year and a half since you've been in this brick and mortar. So yeah. now about in the, essentially in two years, you're going to be at three locations. What is the long-term plan and the vision that you guys have for Dave's moving forward? Um, so the long-term plan is franchising, which we're, you know, we're pretty much there. We're in the, we're, we're in the process and we're, we have almost everything finalized. I think we're registered in like 40 something states right now. Wow. Um, we're going to do, so we're going to wait for these next couple of locations and then gradually start, uh, taking like applications for franchises. And we, so we've, uh, partnered with a couple of great people from, you know, the Blaze Pizza organization and Wetzel's Pretzels organization. So they're very experienced, obviously in like the franchising world. And, you know, and did they people. approach you or did you approach them they or how did that come about? us. Uh, one of the, you know, one of them left the card, uh, with our employees that said, you know, the owner of Blaze Pizza wants to speak to the guys and. You know, we called them in and they came for a meeting and they're like some of the, I mean, they're some of the most successful people in the restaurant world and in other fields, but they were some of the nicest, coolest down to earth people we'd ever met. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and I think we're talking offline, but I, I know Blaze is, is a franchise and, and yeah. has multiple owners. Is, is this person that approached you, is he like the He's main... one of the main guys. His name is Bill Phelps. Okay. Yeah. He's, he, he was actually the founder of Wetzel. So him and uh, Rick Wetzel started Wetzel's Pretzels together. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that the Blaze had anything to do with it. It's funny. It does. Yeah, yeah it's funny. it actually does. Yeah. So, uh, and what, Rick Wetzel was also involved with Blaze Pizza. Well, both have to do with dough. Yeah. True. True. They they love Very the dough. True. They love the dough and they love <laughs> they, making dough. They, they make dough. 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 Which making dough. Yeah. They make dough making dough. Yeah. Amazing. They're making dough. I don't, know, making I don't dough. even know why that's not their motto. Yeah. But and so Bill, in, but that's yeah, a whole different story. Bill, if you're listening to this right now, yeah. your motto should be making dough while making dough. Yeah, I want three percent of every yeah. person that uses yep. that. That's a good one, dude. <laughs> every you should hashtag? make that a t shirt. Yeah, let's do it. Dude, that's really, really funny, man. I'm gonna text that something like one of the guys came up with something really funny. That's amazing. Um, so, so they come to you and they say, "Guys, like this is amazing. We need to franchise it." And so you guys are yeah. just like from yeah. the get go, you're like, "This is what we, what we wanted, and we're gonna do Off it." The get- so kind of. So uh, of course we want because In and Out is not a franchise. It's not. So it's not. But we yeah. kind of didn't. So here's what we wanted to do. We wanted to be a. Li- we want to be like In and Out, but a little bit more of a, like a modern version. So. We understood that to grow fast, you do need help. You know, obviously in and out is amazing, but they have 300 locations in like 90, something like odd years. Blaze Pizza has 300 locations in four years. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference in time, you know. And, you know, a a lot of the fear with becoming a franchise is selling to franchisees that might not uphold your quality, you know, standards. 
And I having, think it's just a fear in general with customers too. Is like, is the quality going to be good? From well, that's the thing. Is like yeah. a lot of these companies, when they do get to the level of franchising, which is hard enough, they're just kind of selling to anybody that's putting up the money. Right. Whereas uh, the so Blaze Pizza doesn't let anybody buy a location that doesn't have multiple fast casual restaurants already. So to, so to like to apply to buy a Blaze, you need to own like a bunch of restaurants already. You can't just be like, I want a Blaze. Unless you're like LeBron James. You have to be an operator. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be an operator. Yeah, yeah, and even LeBron James would probably need like an operator partner that knows yeah. how to run the Because re- yeah. still, even though they're famous, like you don't want to give them... You probably some, definitely don't want to give it to them. Yeah, and it yeah. wouldn't be hard for somebody like that to find... An operator. Uh, yeah, yeah, an operator that's like, hey, I know how to run a restaurant. Yeah, like I'll put up the money, you run the thing. Yeah, because yeah. dude, like wh- what I learned is like a lot of these bigger like franchisees, they're just, you know, they're... They have these big restaurant groups. They have big ma- managers that know how yeah. to run stores. They buy them. They give the operating booklets to their managers. They pass down to the employees. They know how to maintain your quality, and they understand that the reason you became as successful as different them to buy your concept is because you kept certain rules in yeah. play. So and they're not about like yeah. You know, and 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 do they like? Can they have? I don't know how it works in the franchising world, but can they have other franchises at the same time, or is yeah, that a conflict of interest? It's no, not I a conflict of interest. Could. No, I don't think so. I think mm-hmm. it's better if they do. Mm. Interesting. I think I don't, I don't, I'm not. Like if there's two companies that are competing, like let's say someone who has a McDonald's and someone, I don't know if Burger King. That's up to I think the, they still do it, dude. There's I think like, that's a decision of the uh, yeah, owners dude. Because the there's company. like like if somebody comes up to you and they have like ten raising canes and each of their raising canes is like top something in the region and great Yelp reviews, right? Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, yeah, he knows how to run a business. Like it doesn't matter. If, it's not his restaurant raising canes. He's a franchisee. Right. He knows how to take an existing concept and keep it running the way yeah, it's supposed to yeah, run. Exactly. But there's people that don't. You know, there's people that like. They don't know anything about restaurants. So, like, let's say Subway, they have like what, like forty thousand restaurants. Yeah. You think every Subway owner knows how to run a restaurant? Well, no, no that's why every Subway yeah. like is on. It's just they're not doing. Yeah, amazing. for them, it's more about also visibility at that yeah, point. They got forty thousand locations, and yeah. forty thousand locations equal out to like two hundred right. regular locations of any other store. So right. it's like this defeats the purpose. Armand, do you guys want to personally, or not personally, but as you three, do you want to continue to open your own restaurants beyond the yeah. three? So we. Do, but we also want to like, uh, I don't want to say put a limit, but you know, not, not bite off more than we can chew. So right. obviously with the company being a franchise, it's a smaller company, it's, it's like a new baby. Right. So you have your baby in the sense of like individual stores, but now you have like the, it's like the queen, beer, like the queen child, you know, right. like it's the one that's can birth other children. You know what right. I mean? It's yeah, like yeah, an yeah. interesting concept. So it's like you have, you have a second child now that's. I don't want to say more important, but it, it holds a bigger role. So right. it's not on the individual store level anymore. So if right. you're opening up like 10 stores and you're having a hard time keeping up with them, one, those 10 stores are going to reflect back to your main company right. because if the sales are off and they're losing right. money and the franchise and the company starts to have, you know, maybe or whatever, mm-hmm. you're taking away just because you're like, oh, well, I started the concept. I could open up a 50 of them. No, you're, 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 you're going to damage your business. Right. So you need to do as much as is keeping you successful, mm-hmm, keeping mm-hmm. the business successful, not putting too much strain on you, right. not sacrificing the quality of your restaurants. Right. And at the same time, focus on the growth of the overall company versus your individual mm-hmm. growth. Yeah. So individual stores are our individual growth. Company stores and franchise stores, like the company grows. You know, mm-hmm. Even though our stores help the company grow too, but you know, we're at this level, we're more concerned about how big the company can get as a whole versus how many we can have on our own. Because even just Hollywood and is. Like if all, it all LA, it's yeah. just great for us. Like we can keep Hollywood for the rest of our lives and be happy. But, for sure, you know. So we don't want to be like selfish, and we don't want to like you know, again, buy it off more than we could. We, we right. definitely were like North Hollywood, and we we definitely have plans for one in Glendale. Oh, nice! So it's about time. Yeah, come exactly. home. Are you guys from Glendale? I am. Yeah, you're from Glendale. Yeah. Where are you from? I mean, uh, naturally, like I've lived in Glendale <laughs> at some point in my life, but I live in the valley now. Dude, we have actually we were looking at our um, charts, and we have like the. Some of the biggest amount of people coming from Glendale. I mean, man. obviously, got to support. Yeah, why is we there love chicken? There? Armenians got to support Armenians. Yeah, <laughs> what, what's there eating dude, Glendale right now, chicken wise? Uh, dude, I'm on. not going to advertise yeah. other companies <laughs> on the podcast right now for free. Do it, do yeah. it. <laughs> but you know, it's it's funny. We it's a good segue into like you know we could wrap this start wrapping this up. One thing we asked Johnny Ray as well was the fact that there are so many hot chicken spots right now. Yeah. And even it's him good. specifically, Johnny Ray was talking about how just he's like he's like because we're Armenian, he's like. Why is every Armenian opening? Because of us, dude. Yeah. It's our fault. We're yeah. sorry, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't mean to like make yeah. it look so easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, I feel like that's what it is. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, Johnny 
did one of the most amazing things. But just looking at Johnny's system, people couldn't have replicated that no, because he had yeah. a heart system. It was yeah. very culinary. I still don't think they can replicate it because no, no, no. we were yeah, talking about hard. this too. Like when, yeah, we, when you hard. when you no. when you eat Howland Rays, it's 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 different. It's just different. Dude, you know what he did? He took a fried chicken restaurant and he made it into like a, a culinary. Yeah, like yeah. To, to, to the peak. Mm-hmm. You know, because he was a chef himself. Yeah, it's like very military style. Exactly, and I love that. That's his style. No, it's, it's, it works. Thing. It works, and I think exactly. it's going to continue to work. For him, though, and we yeah. discussed it with him, too, his concept is harder to scale it as is. opposed to Dave's Hot Chicken. It is. But again, like, I don't think that that's his concern, and I think that's yeah, a good, it I think it's a good point for like folks that are listening to this. Not every business and business owner wants to scale because don't. with scale comes more problems. Yeah, and like he's a he again. He loves food. He's a culinary guy. Maybe that, he yeah, wants to open it. up a, a French cuisine restaurant. Right. He, he, right. He could take the popularity he's gotten from Howland Rays and do anything. For and, sure. And I'm dude. I, I, I'm sure he might. Dude, he's a young guy. I've known about Johnny. Uh, so my neighbor Andy, who's a good friend of mine, went to school with Johnny and worked at restaurants with him. And mm. I actually told me stories about how like what a smart chef he is and all the like crazy yeah. things he's done yeah, with yeah. different restaurants that have like boosted the restaurants. So. You know, it's not a it's not a accident that his restaurant is so popular. The man knows how to run a restaurant. For he sure. knows how to make customers feel good. For sure. I feel like any concept he does is going to be just as successful. As far as like all the different chicken places, like I said, because we made it kind of look so easy because we they're like, oh, look at these guys. They're doing right. one menu item, tenders. They're making two sandwiches, two things, right. this and that. They did it in a parking lot, so it must be easy. They can literally watch us do it and yeah. kind of even take notes. Mm-hmm. Then all they have to do is put some peppers on it and give it a name and just start selling because right. of supply and demand. Right, Again, right. Somebody in Tahunga is just going to go to the nearest spot versus coming all the way to Dave's sure. or Howland because right. it's, it's closer. Yeah. So until you go there, they're going to go to that spot. But how I necessarily feel about them is like, dude, like, and I feel like Johnny feels the same. Like, we don't own chicken. We don't own hot chicken right. or fried chicken. They've been around longer than any yeah, of us and yeah. they're gonna stay here but if people are doing it just because they think it's a money grab uh i think that's terrible i think that's very bad to just do it because like oh well look at these guys they're making it let's do it make as much money as we can then fuck it whatever afterwards like if you don't have any like love for it and you're just doing it to make money that's i feel like that's not cool and i feel like it's not cool to just keep adding gimmicks to it and not having anything necessarily like special about right, it right what makes you, know? you stand out yeah, like Howland, you go there, you, you know, again, it's like a culinary system. It's, it has its own, like, beauty. Yeah, it's the whole experience, yeah. the energy that's there, yeah. You, and then you come to Days and it has its own experience. Right. It's a fast, casual, right. double, you know, you get two sliders. Right. That's, like, the thing. Exactly. And, you get the, yeah. and then everywhere Which else. Which I'm very doing, excited about, by the yeah, way. Yeah, 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 exactly. And everywhere. And then most of the, there's also, like, Hotville, too, which comes from Nashville. Right. You know, she, she's, yeah. Uh, Kim Prince's nef- uh, niece. So they do amazing chicken also. You know, they're, so yeah. there's all these people that do it for the love. And if you, I feel like you do it for the love, you're going to get successful. And if you're not doing it for the love, then eventually you're going to hit a brick wall. Sure. And because you don't have a love for the business, you're just going to be like, ah, I'm yeah. out. It's cool. So Whatever. what what is, I mean, how, how quickly do you want to start franchising? I mean, I know it's Dude, tomorrow, I but like think, how quickly? I think we're, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the uh, our franchise offices are already like taking slight calls and uh, finalizing all the, you know, paperwork. And I think we just finalized what POS systems we're going to use for all the locations, which is like a big deal because obviously you don't want to have... 50 right. locations, then change your POS systems mid- midway through, which is something that not a lot of people consider. Yeah. So we just decided on that, which is a big, big thing. And then once a few more operating things come into play, there'll be some slight PR that goes in. And then uh, after the PR is when the people really start calling, and then you'll have the right paperwork to send them. You'll be like, somebody called, like, hey, I want a date. It's like, okay, cool. Here's the application you need to fill out. These are the criteria, blah, blah, blah. And this is, this is that. And he'll read them and he'll give them to his lawyer. He'll give his name. We'll check it up. If he gets approved, he gets approved however many and then you start kind of taking it from there like more simple so is the idea like you you, once you have a franchisee then you start building the location out and kind of yeah more like i think well i don't really know exactly because i was my first yeah you're learning too in the process i'm I'm just naturally curious yeah whatever you do know know. but we're learning a lot it is kind of like so people sometimes apparently they buy like a hundred locations at a time some people and they just build them out every year like they'll be on a contract that you have to build at least one every two years Mm -hmm. so he'll pay for a hundred up front and over the span of 40 or whatever, he'll just one, one, two, one, and two. And their grandkids will have like 13 locations. Exactly. Open. And he'll probably like transfer that contract yeah. over to his grandkids and be like, yeah. hey, you got to open five more before next, right. whatever. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. And Sorry. Enjoy the money Sorry you. you're going to be a millionaire. Sorry you have so many restaurants, yeah. dude. <laughs> Poor kids. So it's crazy, man. I mean, there's people that'll buy one, two. There's people that'll buy 100. There's people that'll buy 50. It's just, yeah. it's different. Like, but, you know. So is the plan to it. just kind of be like as quickly as you can, just be everywhere? <laughs> as quickly as we can without sacrificing any of the things that make us who we are you know like yeah like the reason it also big obviously because quality stays the same they hear the same so the reason we scaled ourselves the way we scaled ourselves and the reason we use the ingredients we use and we're not so 
you know, culinary and we're not so about like the, because you know, Holland has Howling crew and all this stuff and we don't want to do that. We don't want anybody to come to the location for the employees. We don't want anyone to come here for us. You know, people used to go for Johnny to Howland Raisin and when Johnny wasn't there, they wouldn't want to go. So we don't want that to happen with us. Like, right. oh, the guys are not there. We don't want to go because yeah. you want them to go for the food and the food only. Yeah, you want the food and the brand yeah. to transcend any individual. So if they're in Tonga, they're not going to be like, oh, well, Tonga doesn't have the Hollywood crew, you know, I don't yeah. want to go there. Or Tonga doesn't have arm on there, I don't want to go there. No, it's like, oh, same sandwich, it's the same right. sandwich as Tonga and it isn't Hollywood. Right. So they go everywhere. Yeah. And I'm curious, I asked you earlier what the roles were now that the company has scaled and they're franchising. I mean, are there like official roles and titles of CEO, CMO, COO, our creative C director? Our CEO is Bill. We made Bill the CEO because he's probably one of the I mean honestly. And Bill is the Founder of Blaze, one of the founders of founders Blaze. Founders of Wetzel's and a co-founder of Blaze, yeah. Okay, okay. So he's actually one of the like, smartest people I've ever met. Um, yeah. He's a great guy, knows exactly what he's doing. Like he's, you know, a big reason for like the growth of it. Not, obviously, there's like a lot of everybody in the team that's involved with Blaze or Wetzel's, some of the most like, some of the right. smartest restaurants here. So around. is this like a joint venture or are they officially? It's on. like, um, so we, we're, t so technically like the franchise company is, uh, me, Tom, Dave, Gary, John and Bill. So we're like, so it's a separate Dave. company. It's a separate company from Dave's Hollywood, but obviously Got Dave's it. Hollywood was is still related back company. to it, but because it was around before the actual franchise, Got it's kind it. of like his grandfather in a way. Yeah. You know Got what it. I mean? So then there's like the franchise company, which is right. owned by us six. Got it. So then Bill will be the CEO because he's obviously, the, he's the most, you know. Qualified to help us scale. Of course, dude. Because yeah. he was the CEO of, I think, right. Blaze and Wetzel's, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. So he's, dude, he's the man. And then, uh, obviously, like, every other, most positions are filled. I don't know everybody by name. It's a bad thing to say. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know all our employees by name yeah, for yeah. all the positions. But, you know, we kind of just, um, we kept our role. Obviously, like, Dave still will, if there's anything, to go back to the food. You know, we'll go back to the Dave. Marketing is still in BI. I still do all the Instagrams and anything marketing wise we'll go back to. And, you know, we're kind of combining their experience with our young experience, you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I feel like it's going to be like one of the, like the reason Dave's was so successful also is because me, Tom and Dave and Gary, we all have like very cool personalities that right. mix together very well. You know, it just, it's perfect. Like there's not very many arguments and if there are, they're very easily solved. And the same with John and Bill, like they're, they have great personalities that go great with ours. They're, they have a lot of experience. They have great senses of humor. So right. and and they let us be us and they're not trying to change anything about the concept. They're not trying to change anything about it. They're just, they love what it is and they just want to help grow it. You know, like th that's what they're about. So we love that. And it's, I feel like it's going to be a really, really good combination yeah. of young, you know, a young, fast, casual, popular restaurant uh, mixed with experience of people that, you know, build some of the fat, like Blaze Pizza 300 location for you is ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Right dude. I got one final question. Cool. What is your order at Dave's Hot Chicken? My, and how often do you eat it? I eat it uh, every day to every other day if I'm not here like a day, but I, I eat it every day because I crave it and just quality checking it. But I eat a uh, medium sliders with cheese, no slaw, uh, and just regular fries with a lot of honey. I don't use too much sauce, but I use it. Wow. Have you tried the Reaper? I have tried the Reaper. I tried the Reaper a lot, especially when we were making it. I used to love spicy food. It was my favorite thing. After eating the Reaper and taste testing it so much, it literally messed my stomach up so bad. I can't eat spicy food anymore. It's wow. the craziest thing. Wow. The Reaper scarred me for life, dude. Like, because we already eat so much of it. Now it was like, Dave, it needs to be hotter. It needs to be hotter. Even when it was like burning. Does Dave eat it like religiously? He doesn't eat the Reaper. Like, uh, none of us will eat the Reaper no. too much because like, I mean, like we made it for it to be like a painful, because yeah. Nashville hot chicken, the culture is for it to be very <laughs> yeah. spicy. You, you just want to have a waiver for people to sign. Yeah, yes, and we'll eat the extra hot sometimes, and you know, I'll eat the hot, but I just, yeah. dude, I, I don't know, like, I think stomach. I'm going to have a medium and a hot. Dude, tonight. one time we went to Howland, like recently, me and Dave, I think it was like a month and a half ago or something like that, and then they're like, oh, Dave's guys are here, and they're like, they brought us a Howland Plus Plus wing, and like, eat the Howland Plus they're Plus wing. They're very adamant about that, by the way. They're dude. like, oh, no, no, like, like they asked us like, what plus we wanted. Plus? Yeah. They asked us what we wanted, and we're like, yeah, you know, I'll take the medium. So, so you'll have the Howland? No, yeah. we got to get you the Howland. I'm like, no, yeah. no please, yeah. I don't want the Howland. Dude, uh, <laughs> and, it's, and it's funny because well, obviously we own a uh, Nashville chicken spot too, so we can't like bitch out and be like, no. So we ate it, and we're on empty stomachs because we're waiting for our food. So you just died. Dude, I was like trying to keep a straight face. I'm like, yeah, this shit got makes bomb. I'm like dying. I eat like uh, like two bites of my sandwich. I'm like, Dave, we gotta get out of here because my stomach's burning. Dude, <laughs> I threw up like for the rest of the day. How like, hot was I think they told hot, us hot, they told like, us it's a plus. three to four day recovery time is what they told it us. Is, dude, it is, and especially if you eat it on an empty stomach, it's like so bad. Dude. I had like, the on, like, hot empty. and I was gonna die. Yeah, like uh, and, and I had a piece of the hot and I was gonna die. Dude, so we <laughs> ate that wing right, and uh, obviously it burns. So I I try to wash it down with like a lot of uh, sweet tea, and I realized I have an empty stomach filled with a bunch of Reaper pepper and all this stuff and sweet uh. tea. 
fuck. And on top of that, eating a little bit of like a medium slider or like a medium sandwich, like half of it. Dude, I was like, dude, I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw up in Holland Rays. I'm like, that'll be the worst thing ever. <laughs> Owner of Dave Dave's, 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 Dave's throws up in Holland Rays. Like, oh God. I was like, that's going to be, I was like, or if I like faint and they got to call the ambulance to the take disrespect. me out of here. Like, well, people hopefully you're wearing a Dave's shirt if you yeah, were in the ambulance. People in line are going to be like, dude, that guy's a bitch. <laughs> it's the owner of Dave's that fainted, dude. <laughs> you got to take him away on an ambulance on a wheelchair. It was just like shaking and it. stuff. Wow, that would be hilarious, man. Well, Armand, thank you so much of for course, spending dude. your time with thank us. Thank you, guys, man. We're excited for, for what's to come with Dave's, and obviously course, we man. love everything you guys have done. We constantly tell our friends and family about it, and you they love it as dude. well. So, you know, we're, we're going to stick out and be evangelists for a long time. So good luck with man. everything, and uh, we guys, can't wait man. to see what happens. Hopefully, maybe in a year from now, when we're more successful, we can do another podcast. Yes, for sure. Right for at sure. Any time, any time. Of course, guys. For sure, brother. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Much love. Peace out, chicken.